السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون to the long time listener and first time visitor we welcome you to this episode now without further ado let's get into it الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد يا مرحبا بكم الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah Imam Uthaymeen, rahimahullahu ta'ala, and I really want everyone to pay very close attention because what we want to cover in this episode is we want to cover a key concept that is related to our success, a key concept that is related to our success and our practice of the religion. So anyone who wants to be religious, anyone who is striving to practice their religion, then this is a concept that you really want to make sure that your actions embody bithni lahi ta'ala na'am okay so imam al-thaymin rahimahullah ta'ala he mentions he says idha ja'a al-khabar min allah ta'ala wa rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that when news comes to you from allah and from his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa saddiqhu then believe it submit unto it na'am this is very important we have to believe in it the Imam goes on to say, uh, بالقبول, and accept it. Take it and accept it. What Taslim and submit unto it. This is how we are to be as Muslims. So and, and I really want to stress this point. If you want to be religious, if you want to be upon your deen, if you want to be upright upon your deen, if you want to be a practicing Muslim, practicing in a manner that is correct then we have to believe in that in which Allah Ta'ala and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they informed us of. So when we learn about aspects of our religion, when we learn about things that have a direct impact upon our daily life, then we have to, one, believe it. Two, we have to, what, accept it. Three, we have to submit unto it. So if we were to go over it, when news comes to us from Allah and from His Messenger, there are three steps. The first step is we have to believe in it. Then we have to accept it, and we have to submit unto it. Naam. The Shaykh, he says, وَلَا تَقُلْ لِمَا And don't say, why? وَكَيْفْ Don't say, how? Okay? When it comes to us, we say what? We believe in it. سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We hear, we obey. We believe it, we accept it, we submit unto it. Naam. This is the reality. This is if you want to be religious, if you want to be a good Muslim, if you want your heart to be pure, this is how it is. That verse comes to you from the book of Allah, you believe in it. You accept it and you submit unto it. You don't say how, you don't say why. When it comes to you, a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it's clear this hadith is a hadith that is sound. It's authentic. Naam. It is sahih. Then what do we do? We believe in it. We accept it. We submit unto it. This is the only way that we are going to be successful and gain success. This is the only way that we are going to be upright upon our religion. There is no other path to being upright upon the religion except that when the command from Allah and His Messenger come, we believe in it. We take it, we, we hold on to it, we accept it, we submit unto it. We have to submit ourselves to the commands when they come. We have to accept them, we have to believe in them. Because this is the way of the believers. And to say how, to say why, this is not from the way of the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his noble book, he says, وَمَا كَانَ 
lil mu'min wala mu'mina it is not befitting for a believing man nor a believing woman i want you to listen up right now okay it is not befitting for a believing man nor a believing woman idha qada allah wa rasuluhu amran that when allah and his messenger have ruled in an affair and i want you i want us all to really think about this and to really contemplate over the meaning of this verse and i want us to look at it in light of our daily life our day to day when there comes a ruling from allah and his messenger on a particular thing maybe that is the manner in which we dress there's a ruling on how we are to dress appropriately we have guidance when it comes to us a ruling as relates to the particular type of profession that we are to go into how we are to conduct ourselves in business how are we going to conduct ourselves and what what jobs are permissible naam so on and so forth we have to look at it because we have a ruling from allah we have a ruling from the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam so what do we what do we do go back to the three right correct we want to look at it as relates to our food there are things that are going to be presented to us to eat there's a ruling from allah and a ruling from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as relates to that to that food whether it's permissible or not so we have to what go back to the three correct naam go back to the three steps correct all right so there're going to be different things that come up in our life so i want us to look at this anything that we encounter on our in our daily life then i want us to keep this verse in our mind because there's going to be a ruling from allah and from his messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam as relates to that particular thing so when we see that when that situation comes up when we're in that situation and confronted with an affair then we have to go back to the three steps correct okay now allah ta'ala goes on to say that what that when there comes to the believing man that it is not befitting for the believing man nor the believing woman that once allah and his messenger have ruled in an affair naam and allah ta'ala he uses the nakira amran any affair whether it's big or whether it's little whether it's related to your religion or related to your worldly life whether it's related to how you interact with people whether 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 what you keep going on and on and on and on any affair naam any affair that when allah ta'ala and his messenger have given a ruling in any affair that it is not befitting for the muslim man nor the muslim woman let's be more specific because allah ta'ala he says the mu'min wa mu'mina the believing man and the believing woman those who have iman that it is not befitting for them when a ruling comes from his lord his messenger allah ta'ala he says ay yakuna lahum al khayra that they will have any say so or any option any opinion naam ay yakuna lahum al khayra min amrihim that they will have anything to say any type of opinion any type of objection as relates to their ruling so when the ruling comes it's not befitting for us to now sit back and say how come and i'm not saying how come from a standpoint of a person wants to understand the wisdom and learn so that they could better implement i'm not saying that i'm saying the how come that is obstinate why why i got to do that for how come now I'm almost as if to say until you make it make sense i'm not going to listen huh it's like that why explain it as if to say if your explanation is not uh befitting or reach, reaches my level and my standard of 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 acceptability i'm going to reject it no it's not befitting this is a law saying this this is the promise so i said i'm saying this once you know it has been confirmed this is what allah has said that's it there's no argument there is no questioning once it has been confirmed that this is what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said that's it there's no arguing there is no questioning there's no room for your opinion in your take on the matter not at all naam so allah ta'ala he says let's go back wa ma kana li mu'min wa la mu'minatin idha qada allah wa rasuluhu amran 
أن يكون لهم الخيرة من أمرهم. That it is not befitting for the Muslim man, nor for the believing man, now nah, excuse me, for the believing man, nor the believing woman, that once Allah and His Messenger have ruled in an affair, that they will have any <clears throat> option or any um, argument as relates to that particular affair. And then Allah Ta'ala, He goes on to remind us of the dire consequences of a person who does not believe in it, accept it, and submit. Allah Ta'ala, He says, وَمَنْ يَعْصِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ ضَلَّ ضَلَالًا مُبِينًا And whoever has disobeyed Allah and disobeyed His Messenger, then they will have gone clearly astray. Naam. This is dalalan mubinan. This is going astray in the clearest of manner. There is no ambiguity. There is no, well, maybe he's astray. Maybe she's astray. No, clearly astray. Naam. You, you, you know that Allah Ta'ala tells you to, 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 to be like this, and then you don't listen. You do opposite. You're clearly astray as it relates to that affair. You know that this is a command from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you don't listen, you're going to do something else, then, then you being astray in this affair is clear. There's no argument about this. There's no debate as it relates to you, you being astray. You are astray in this affair. Ma'am, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, do this and you're doing that. Allah Ta'ala told you to do this and you're doing that. Oh, you are clearly astray. Ma'am, there's no you know, room for debate, as, as they say. And this was the way of the Sahaba. The Sahaba, Shaykh Uthaymini mentions, and he brings a very, very good point. He mentions, he says, Well, Sahaba, naam, the Sahaba, ka, yani, kana Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuhadithuhum. He said that the, 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 the companions, the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to speak to them, he used to say things unto them, bil asha, he used to say certain things to them. Qad takunu gharibah, that there were some things that he would say to them that perhaps it was strange unto them, naam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He used to say things sometimes To some of the companions That were strange to some of them uh, Some things that were that Shaykh says It was far from their understanding Because not everyone's the same Okay Not everyone's on the same level So there were some things That the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He would say That perhaps At times There were some From the Sahaba who didn't understand it. It was strange unto them. It was far from their comprehension. Now, the Shaykh says, but what did they do? Did they say, how come? Did they say, no, 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 wait. Make this make sense first? No. But rather, they accepted that with what? They, ex they accepted it. They believed in it. They accepted it and they submitted to it. Naam. They didn't say, Lima, what cave? They didn't say, how come, why? Naam. They didn't say, how come, why? Explain it. Until I can understand it, I ain't doing it. Huh? No. They understood enough to know what was being said. They understood enough to be able to implement. They understood enough to be able to adopt the belief. But did they understand the intricacies and everything of it? No. Some of them. I'm not saying all of them. Some of them. Did they understand it? No. But what did they do? They accepted it. They accepted it. Because your understanding something is not a prerequisite for its acceptance. It's not that, wait, wait, wait. I got to understand it first. If you don't make it make sense to me, then I'm not going to accept it. No. The only thing that we're concerned is, did Allah say that? Yes. This is how it was understood by the, by the companions? Yes. That's it. I believe in it. As it has come. Did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, did he say that? Yes. This hadith is sound? It's authentic? Yes. Okay, khalas. This is how the companions understood it? Yes. This is how they acted upon it? Yes. Okay, that's it. This is what I'm going to do. The way I'm, I'm going to implement it, the way that they implemented it. I'm going to believe the way that they believed. That's it. That's all we need to know. Not understand the intricacies and the nuances and things and this and that until I get this and then I'm not going to accept it. Da, da. <gasps> no. That's not what they did. That's not the way of the believer. As Allah Ta'ala, he tells us here in this ayah. And that aforementioned ayah, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention the, its reference. It could be found in Surah Al-Ahzab. 
and it's verse 36. So Surah Al-Ahzab, and it's verse number 36. And I encourage everyone to go back and to read that verse, inshallah ta'ala, to go back and to study the tafsir of that verse, inshallah ta'ala. And perhaps in another episode uh, in the future, bithnillahi ta'ala, we'll go over the tafsir of this ayah. Naam. But for now, I just want to lay down and share the concept with you. When I mean lay down, I mean share the concept with you, bithnillahi ta'ala. Naam. That when command comes, when the news comes from Allah and is from His Messenger, we believe in it. We accept it and we submit unto it. We don't argue. We don't say how. We don't say why. And we don't try to reinterpret it. Okay? And, and this is a very important concept and point that has to be mentioned. That the deen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the noble book, Al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum islam adina. That on this day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and I'm pleased for you Islam as a religion. Now, so let me let me let me let me bring a prop in here for an example. Okay. You see this cup right here, right? You see this cup. Okay. In this cup right here, if we were to fill it perfectly, right? If we fill it to the brim, it's perfect. If you were to take something away from it, that makes it what? Imperfect. It's not perfect anymore. All right. If you were to add something to it, it start to spill over, then what? No longer perfect. Correct? Right. So Allah Ta'ala tells us that he perfected our religion for us. Our religion is perfect. So it doesn't need anyone to add something to it. And it doesn't need anyone to take anything away from it. So this concept of we need to now reinterpret Islam. What do, you, what do you mean reinterpret Islam? We need to look at the, the, the Kitab and the Sunnah and give to the new interpretation based upon the time frame that we live in. This is not a thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent down the book. He sent down the Sunnah, okay? Because Allah revealed the book and the Sunnah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained it to us. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he left us upon that which is clear. His nighttime is like his day. His explanation is known. His explanation is already known. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained it. So we don't need to bring another explanation. We don't need to reinterpret it. No, no way. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he already, what? He already explained it. He already told us what it means. It means what it means. So we don't have to look and search for a new meaning because there's no way possible that you're going to bring a meaning that I will, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't know and think you're upon good. You're going to bring a meaning that, that Abu Bakr didn't know and you think you're upon good. You're going to bring a meaning that Umar didn't know, that Uthman didn't know, that Ali didn't know, Radhi Allah Ta'ala Anhum. You're going to bring a meaning that the Sahaba didn't know and think that you're upon good where Allah Ta'ala commands us to follow them. Allah Ta'ala sent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to us. So if the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't know, do you think that you, you, you're going to bring a meaning that's, that's alien to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you're upon good? No. That means what? You're wrong. Because what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, that's what it is. What, how the Sahaba understood it, that's what it is. Now, what Allah Ta'ala revealed, that's what it is. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Man, amina, amina fuhu raddun. Whoever introduces into or whoever does an action and it's a fear of ours, which is not from it, it's rejected. Woman ahdatha fi amrina to the end of the hadith. And whoever introduces into this affair of ours, same thing, what? It's rejected. So you can't bring anything new. Either either yani, if it was good, let's have a if it was good, they would have beaten us in doing it. Everything that we know what is Islam is because the Prophet وسلم, taught the companions, the companions taught the Tabi'un, the Tabi'un taught the Etbat Tabi'in, so on and so forth until it reaches us right here now today. So who's going to come and say, oh, we need to change it, we need to reinterpret it, we need to you know, make it fit our time. What Allah revealed, what Allah revealed is a miracle. Why? Because it's appropriate and applicable to all times. Now, it's appropriate and applicable to all times. And it doesn't change because it's perfect. So the dean is not in need of reinterpretation. No. Anyone who says that the dean is, it needs to be reinterpreted 
We need a new tafsir for the Quran. We need no explanation to the ahadith, something that is foreign, that none of the companions ever spoke about, knew about anything like that. And even greater, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he didn't teach it because it wasn't revealed unto him. <laughs> so anyone who says that we need to reinterpret the din is a person that needs to check themselves, and they're the ones that are in need of rectification. They need to rectify themselves, and they are the ones who need to believe, accept, and submit. Now, because what it is, is not according to what you think, but what it is, is according to what Allah sent down. That makes sense? Now, that makes sense. Inshallah, that makes sense. Okay? Listen, this concept is a concept that is a must if we want to be successful. Now, there are other videos and other episodes that we have done that highlight some of these concepts. We'll leave some of them over here and that so yani, a person can go back and to look a little more into this topic. But hold on to your religion, yeah, Muslim. Don't let people distract you. Don't let people misguide you. Don't let people lead you astray. Okay? When it comes to your command from Allah Ta'ala, hold on to it, believe in it, accept it, and submit unto it. Illa liqa, till next time we meet. Astaudirukumullah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.